Thank you, operator, and thanks everyone for attending K92 Mining's updated Kananto Gold Mine Integrated Development Plan Conference call. We hope you and your families are doing well. In addition to myself, we have on the line John Lewins, Chief Executive Officer and Director, and Justin Blanchett, Chief Financial Officer. I would also like to remind everyone that after the remarks from management, the call will be followed by a Q&A session. As we will be making forward-looking statements during the call, please refer to the cautionary notes and risk disclosure in our MDNA and slide two of the webcast presentation. Also, please bear in mind that all dollar amounts mentioned in the conference call are in United States dollars unless otherwise noted. Now, I'll turn it over to John to provide an overview of the economic study. Well, thank you, David, and welcome everyone. We're delighted to announce yet another major milestone for K92 being the release of the updated integrated development plan, which has delivered a major improvement on the economics of the Canaan 2 gold mine, outlining a robust tier one asset. Before I discuss the uh, specifics of the, of the study, I'd like to begin by providing some high level background information. The updated integrated development plan, also referred to as the updated IDP, as an effective date of January the 1st, 2024. All forecasts begin from this date. The study supersedes the 2022 integrated development plan, also referred to as the prior IDP, which has an effective date of 1 January 2022. Similar to the prior IDP, the updated IDP evaluates two cases, a DFS case and a PEA case. The DFS case evaluates a stage expansion to 1.2 million tonnes per annum through the construction of a standalone process plant with the current stage 2A plant idled. This is consistent with the prior IDP DFS case. The PEA case evaluates the completion of two expansions. First, ramping up to the 1.2 million tonnes per annum through the construction of the new standalone process plant. Then a second expansion to 1.8 million tonnes per annum by running the stage 2A plant at 600,000 tonnes per annum and the stage 3 new plant at 1.2 million tonnes per annum concurrently. This is referred to as a stage four expansion. I note that the updated IDP PA case throughput is 100,000 tonnes per annum higher than the prior IDP, supported by the throughput performance or outperformance rather of the actuals that we've achieved in the 2A plants since the last study. For the updated IDP, we engaged several consulting firms, including HS Consultants, GR Engineering Services, Entech, Metallurgical Management Services, WSP, ATC Williams, and EMM. I think it's important to note that construction for the expansion is well underway, and the mine declared commercial production almost 70 years ago. So that provides excellent information to support the study. Now, in terms of the study highlights, I think it's fair to say we're very pleased with the results. Beginning with the after-tax NPV5, the DFS case delivers an NPV of 680 million US dollars at $1,900 per ounce, or almost 1.1 billion at $2,500 per ounce. While the PEA case recorded an even higher NPV of 2.3 billion at $1,900 an ounce, or 3.3 billion at $2,500 per ounce. Importantly, the growth capital remains low at 195 million and 201 million for the DFS case and the PEA case, respectively. Important to note also that 15 million of growth capital was spent in 2023 and is not included in this figure. After adding this to the growth capex presented, you'll see that the growth capital for the project remains closely aligned at 216 million for the PEA case with the 210 million capex that was guided in 2024 operational guidance in February of this year. So for the DFS case, grades are high, averaging 8.5 grams per tonne gold equivalent over a seven year mine life which for an underground operation supported by measured and indicated resource is very substantial. This supports uh, an average run rate of 303,000 ounces gold equivalent per annum with a peak year of 319,000 ounces gold equivalent produced. Over the life of mine, costs are very low. The all-in sustaining cost is estimated at $920 per ounce gold equivalent on a co-product basis or $665 per ounce gold 
on a net or byproduct credit basis. For the PEA case, the grade is also high, averaging 8.2 grams per tonne gold equivalent over a substantial 14-year mine life, supporting a run rate of 414,000 ounces gold equivalent per annum, with a peak year of 485,000 ounces gold equivalent. Costs, as expected, are even lower for the PEA case, benefiting from the higher throughput rate. With all in sustaining cost of $822 per ounce gold equivalent on a co-product basis, or $432 per ounce on net of byproduct credits basis. Both cases have the commissioning of the Stage 3 plant expansion commencing in late Q2 2025. It's important to note the construction is currently tracking better than this. For the PEA case, Stage 4 is planned to commence second half 2027. In terms of the key changes from the prior IDP, a major change, which also is a big driver for updating the study, is the incorporation of our latest mineral resource reported in 2023, representing almost a full two years of additional exploration results. The updated mineral resource recorded as measured and indicated resources increased by 14% to 2.6 million at 10 grams per tonne gold equivalent, while inferred increased by 73% to 4.5 million ounces at 8.5 grams per tonne gold equivalent. This extended the terminal year for both cases, particularly for the PEA case, which will be shown in uh, later in the presentation. So other key changes from the previous IDP include the following. A significant improvement in economics from the new concentrate offtake agreement with Trafigura, featuring improved metal payabilities, lower penalties, lower treatment and refining charges and transport charges, all of which were better than the assumptions in the prior IDP a higher ultimate PEA case throughput rate as previously discussed. An increase in commodity prices with the base case metal price of gold increasing to $1,900 per ounce from $1,600 per ounce to be more aligned with recent peer studies. Since the prior IDP, inflationary pressure has been mild, which has resulted in a significant margin expansion. As our base case gold price assumption is now well below the current spot, We've also presented numbers closer to spot at $2,500 per ounce. Cutoff grades have been slightly modified from the prior IDP to achieve the optimal mine plan, with the PEA case being reduced by 0.5 grams per tonne gold equivalent, and the DFS case increased by 0.5 grams per tonne gold equivalent. The reduction in the cutoff grade for the PE was due to an internal decision to have a moderate longer life of mine at a comparable NPV, which we believe is in the best interest of the various stakeholders, particularly our local community and, of course, uh, Papua New Guinea. Significant and improved changes made to the paste field design with the mining method and recovery method having only limited changes from the prior IDP. Capital costs have been increased to reflect scope improvement changes and also general inflation over the last two years from the prior IDP. Importantly, the capital cost remains closely aligned with our previous disclosed guidance of 210 million announced in Q1, as noted earlier. Now, the following slide summarizes the comparison between prior IDP and the updated IDP for both the DFS and the PEA cases. The key points on this slide are firstly, after tax NPV at 1900 increased by 16% for the DFS case and a very significant 73% for the PE case. Using prices closer to spot at $2,500 per ounce, NPV increased over 86% for the DFS case and a very substantial 149% for the PE case. Secondly, the particularly significant increase to NPV in the PEA case are driven by a combination of a major expansion to, to all-in sustaining cost margin of over 16% at $1,900 per ounce, or over 81% at $2,500 per ounce. And total ounces produced increased by 46%, which extended the final year of production by five years. Thirdly, for both cases, run rate and peak production remain fairly similar to the prior IDP. In summary, the updated IDP has delivered a major improvement in economics. Now, in terms of the mining method and mining plan, very similar to the prior IDP. 
evoke a long haul open stoping utilizing waste fuel will continue to be employed as it has been for several years until the paste fuel comes online in the study in Q3, Q4, 2025. Stope shapes were generated using MSO at cutoffs of 3.5 gram per ton and 4 gram per ton gold equivalent for the DFS and PA respectively. Both cases leverage the existing twin incline infrastructure, which is already complete, and ore and waste passes, which are currently under development for highly efficient material movement, leveraging gravity. In terms of the dilution calculation, the parameters remain effectively unchanged from the prior IDP, except as the text bolded, which outlines how we incorporate a more conservative assumptions when proximal to the hanging wall or foot wall of the fault gauge through adding an additional one meter of dilution at 1.42 grams per ton gold equivalent. I note, however, that we see the fault gauge as a major opportunity. It is well mineralized and has recorded some high-grade drill intersections through it. And once paste fill is commissioned, we see the potential to effectively mine it and ultimately extend the mine life. Overall dilution averaged 28.5% in the PEA and 27.8% in the DFS. In terms of the stage three 1.2 million ton per annum processing flow sheet, there are only minor modifications to the plant design from the prior IDP, and particularly around modifying the design to allow for efficient future expansions. The stage three plant flow sheet is more modern and optimized when compared to the stage 2A processing circuit currently operating. Now, a major change of the prior IDP is the paste fill system. The new design is considered low risk in terms of both construction and operation. It involves producing a filter cake at the processing plant and backhauling it via the surface haulage trucks to a storage point near the 800 portal and then transporting it to an underground paste fill plant via a dedicated fleet. The prior IDB transported a thickened slurry from the process plant via a pipeline over 6.5 kilometers to the portal and involved two stages of tails thickening and extensive pumping from overland to underground, which we viewed as having high technical risk. Importantly, the updated IDP underground paste fill is located near to the center of the deposit at approximately the 1200 RL. This is important because it, it means that voids it fills below can be transported via gravity, while voids to fill above it is able to be reached with only one stage of pumping, thereby considerably lowering operating risk. Ultimately, the capital cost was similar and operating costs only moderately higher compared to the prior IDP. In October, we awarded the river crossing and haulage road contract. This was done on a lump sum fixed price basis for the majority of the project, considerably de-risking our capital cost. It's important to note that the capital cost for the river crossing is higher than the prior IDP. However, the majority of capital cost increase has been offset through savings and other packages which have already been awarded, particularly in relation to electrical infrastructure. And this is a key reason why the growth capital remains closely aligned with our operational guidance reported in February this year. In relation to the haulage road upgrade, the scope is focused on four key areas. Widening the road from approximately 9 metres to 14 metres, smoothing out the variance in gradient, reducing gradient in certain areas to improve road safety, and straightening the road in certain areas. This upgrade results in improved road haulage safety and efficiency in operating larger trucks. It is incorporated in sustaining capital and yields significant savings in operating costs over the life of mine. The haul road and river crossing upgrades are planned to be completed by the end of 2025. Now, looking at the life of mine plan uh, material movements, the DFS case achieves run rate throughput in 2027, while operating at a fairly steady head grade for most of the mine plan. In terms of the PEA case, it achieved stage three run rate throughput of 1.2 million tonnes per annum in Q1 2027 and stage four run rate in Q4 2027. It operates for almost eight years at maximum or near maximum throughput, a significant improvement from the three years of maximum throughput in the prior IDP. Grades are below average in 2029 through to 2031, and it's a focus of our exploration program to not only add mine life, but to bring in higher grade feed sources to maximize production and cash flow during these years. And that, of course, is exploration Cora Judd within the mine lease and outside of the mine lease, as well as other sources.
It's important to note that the ramp up makes allowance for the slow development rates and the impact of the mine shutdown in the first half of 2024. For both cases, the planned uh, schedules reaching 1.2 kilometers per month in May 2025. And in terms of operating costs, costs are obviously very low. For the DFS case, on a co-product basis, cash costs are $694 per ounce gold equivalent, and all in sustaining costs are $920 per ounce gold equivalent. Net of byproduct credits, cash cost of $380 per ounce gold, and all in sustaining $665 per ounce gold. As for the PEA case, on a co-product basis, cash costs a $633 per ounce gold equivalent, and all in sustaining costs, $822 per ounce gold equivalent. Net of byproduct credits, cash costs are $174 per ounce gold, and all in sustaining costs of $432 per ounce gold. When drilling down into the operating cost per tonne, the DFS case increased $29 per tonne processed, and the PE case increased by 6.6% or $7.86 per tonne processed from the prior IDP, which we see is a good outcome when factoring two years of cost inflation from the prior study. We see the potential to do better than the cost presented, particularly in terms of processing, but also with respect to GNA. In summary, we expect significant margin expansion from the prior IDP. In terms of capital cost, on the left is a breakdown of the capital cost for the DFS case, and on the right, the breakdown for the PEA case. Importantly, as noted earlier, we're pleased with how the capital costs are tracking the remain closely aligned with our operational guidance disclosed in February. The largest packages, excluding the owner's team approvals and indirects for both cases, are the process plant, paste plant, river crossing upgrade, and power station. It's important to highlight that of those four large packages, Excluding the paste fill plant, the vast majority of the capital has been spent or committed and mostly awarded on a fixed price basis, significantly de-risking the capital cost for K92. The process plant has 97% of capital either spent or committed and represents almost half of the total growth capital. The river crossing, 84% of the capital is either spent or committed. The power station, 88% of capital is either spent or committed. Overall, as at September 30, 2024, 63% of capital has been spent or committed, which following the award of the river crossing contract earlier this month has increased to 68% of capital spent or committed. It's also important to note that in both cases in the study, fully funded. K92 has a strong cash balance, ending Q2 with 71 million in cash plus 20 million in restricted cash. The K92 has the ability to make unrestricted beginning 1st of January, 2025. We have also uh, access to significant amounts of liquidity through undrawn credit facilities. At the end of Q2, it was some 80 million. We drew down a further 20 million in July and have 60 million available to draw down on demand. There's also an additional 30 million of liquidity available through an accordion feature. In Q3, we delivered record production in a record gold price environment resulting in a notable increase in our cash balance even after considerable capital expenditure for expansions during the quarter. Lastly, our commodity price downside is protected through the cost-effective purchase of put options. Just over 2 million earlier this month, we purchased put option contracts for the next nine months covering 12,500 ounces of gold per month at 2,400 per ounce to protect against downside price risk. To be clear, it's not a hedge. We'll sell on spot if it's higher. This is insurance, and we retain full exposure to the upside of commodity price. In summary, our financial position and outlook is strong. I'd like to take a moment to show you some of our recent construction photos. The first image is a drone view of the process plant uh, with the wet end of the plant in the foreground and the dry end in the background. As annotated, we note that a significant number of the long lead items have already arrived on site, many of which arrived comfortably ahead of the construction schedule. In the foreground, you'll see that the structural and mechanical steelworks plus equipment has arrived on site for the contractor to complete those works. We now show two more close-up photos of the process plant construction. On the left is the dry end of the plant, where you'll see a significant process has already been made. In the foreground is the sag and ball mills. 
The ball mill sills are 100% complete and ready for steelwork, mechanical and piping. The sag mill sills are nearing completion with due date of mid-October, and I note these photos were taken almost a week ago. This zone is in the critical path and is tracking well. At the surge bin and reclaim, all raft slabs have been poured and are awaiting construction of walls. This area is not a critical path and is being worked on opportunistically. At the primary crusher, shutters, forms and bracings are in place for the first pour of the wall lift. This zone is also not on the critical path. As shown in the right image, sibyls are complete uh, at the tail sickener and structural steel erection has commenced. The filter press building raft slab is complete and awaiting shuttering and pouring of the walls. For the water services, the outer ring beam foundations have been poured with the in inner ring beam to follow. Again, this area is not on the critical path and works are done opportunistically. For the flotation circuit, which is just outside of view, we've completed all of the civils except for ground slabs for walking around the plant, which can be done at any time. The image on the left is another angle of the sag and ball mill construction, highlighting the significant progress made to date, as noted in the prior slide. The right image is of the warehouse expansion upgrade, which we are completing in-house. This will increase the size of the warehouse by a factor of three. So now in terms of life of mine production schedule, the DFS case ramps up to run rate in 2027, which is also peak production of 319,000 ounces gold equivalent produced. The average run rate production is 303,000 ounces gold equivalent. During the ramp up, costs also come down significantly, as you'd expect. With the coal product run rate, all in sustaining cost averaging $780 per ounce gold equivalent or $397 dollars per ounce gold on a net of byproduct credit basis. For the PEA case, production achieves run rate in 2028, producing 440,000 ounces gold equivalent in that year, with a run rate average of 414,000 ounces gold equivalent and a peak production of 485,000 ounces gold equivalent in 2034. Through our exploration programs, we see potential to bring in higher production years sooner, like the DFS, during the ramp up, costs come down significantly, with coal product run rate all in sustaining costs averaging $805 per ounce gold equivalent or $338 per ounce gold on a net of byproduct basis. Looking at after tax cash flows at $1,900 an ounce, which, as you'll be aware, is considerably below the current spot prices, both cases generate significant amount of free cash flow. The run rate average for the DFS case is $239 million per year, and the PEA case is $316 million per year. Now, if we look at $2,500 per ounce, the average run rate for the DFS case is $328 million per year, and the PEA case is $431 million per year. And since gold prices are going higher, and we'll probably get asked this question, we ran the cash flow analysis at a near spot price for gold, copper, and silver, which outlined an average for the DFS case of $346 million per year and for the PEA of $454 million per year. So I think in summary, the Canantu gold mine is an exceptional project. In terms of the after-tax NBV5 sensitivity analysis, both the DFS case and the PEA case benefit immensely from higher gold prices. The DFS case at $2,500 an ounce delivers an NPV5 of 1.1 billion, increasing to 1.5 billion at $3,100 an ounce. In the PEA case, at $2,500 an ounce delivers an NPV5 of 3.3 billion, increasing to $4.3 billion at $3,100 per ounce. For the PEA, I think it's important to note that the MPV at $1,900 is still considerably greater than our current market cap. And we believe this study highlights the significant deep value and re-rating potential of K92. And importantly, the commissioning of the Stage 3 process plant is near-term and fully funded. Lastly, I'd like to highlight that there are multiple high potential opportunities to improve upon the already robust economics of the updated integrated development plan. 
There are currently 11 rigs on the property, six underground, five on the surface. And we see multiple high potential opportunities, including, but not limited to, firstly, near mine infrastructure targets to extend the known resource, Cora, Cora South, Cora Deeps, Judd, Judd South, Judd Deeps. Secondly, expand known satellite deposits, particularly Aracompa, which we have increased the number of drill rigs by a factor of four during the course of the year, so we've got four now. Maniapi is also very promising, with historic highlights including 49 metres at four grams per tonne and seven metres at 22 grams per tonne. Thirdly, exploration for high-grade veins within development distance from Cora and Judd, including Karempe, Mate and Mesoan. And lastly, deliver better than forecast plant throughput and recovery. We see a major potential opportunity to exceed the design throughput of the stage 3A plant demonstrated from the multiple throughput records that we've achieved over the last 12 months in the stage 2A design. We also note that recent gold recovery outperformed versus the updated IDP parameters observed in Q2 and Q3 of this year. And that's also very encouraging. So with that, operator, we'd like to commence the Q&A session.